Yo, what's up? In my left hand, I'm holding the high grade aerial. In my right hand, I have an Evangelion mass production type. What if I gave him these poses and did this? In this video, I will show you how I did it. It's kind of funny, when I started this build, the show was still running and coming to its end. I think we were around episode 20 or 21 if I remember correctly. Though I am a Universal Century fan, I must say that I enjoyed this show quite a bit. And like most of us, uh, I also think, and I'm wording this as ambiguous as possible to avoid spoiling, I also think it could have been more. Nonetheless, I have grown to like this kit, the Hero Gundam, a lot and holding it in my hands right now, I still can't believe how detailed it is. Especially the core has so much going for it. That pointy chest adds a certain level of aggressiveness while still being very majestic. The round shapes around the armpits pose a 180 degree departure from the straight lines of the chest, but strangely add to the overall dynamic. The only thing I'm not too fond of is the heels, as not only their clunky design, but the feet joints are very peculiar to say the least. Speaking of the lower part of the body, don't you feel like this kid has some massive thighs? They remind me of another very iconic female fighter. So my overarching theme for this area would be some techno cyber raven theme. And yeah, now that we have a plan, let's start with step one. Before I think about doing any custom panel lines, I'm trying to make it a habit to rescribe some of the existing lines and also carve some extra lines into the edges of the parts. This way you can add one more layer of depth without having to draw any custom lines. So if you're not into custom panel lines or maybe think of it as a tough skill to learn, this is the way to go. Just like with custom panel lines, you can easily get lost in this step. I mean, have you ever tried counting all the edges, bevels, corners on a Gunpla kit? I try to stick to the most obvious and largest spots on the kit. For the custom panel lines, I drew inspiration from Rihito's Instagram. He's a real master when it comes to these circuit board-like panel lines. If you don't know who I'm talking about, hit him up on Instagram. His designs are rad. For even more inspiration, I jumped on Google image search and typed in circuit board lines and boom, there you go. With all those lines and dots carved into my visual memory, I took my 0.3mm scriber and got to work. While drawing the designs, I tried to pay attention to the existing panel lines, mostly to their angles. I tried to adapt the original layout, lean on the existing lines, and slowly build up the overall look. By abiding to these rules, I would be able to incorporate my own custom designs while still maintaining the kit's original look. Learning the kit's aesthetics is something that takes practice and comes with experience. So if you feel that maybe this time your kit didn't turn out the way you want it, just try again with the next one. You will train your sense for the correct design with each new kit. Drilling the holes for the end part of the panel lines was straightforward. I took the smallest pin vise that I owned, created a little dent for a bigger pin vise as a guide, and finished everything with a 2mm spin blade by God hand. There's one thing that I would like to pass on as a piece of advice. Next time, I would try and stay as shallow as possible, or at least as deep as the panel line itself. Some of the ending holes were too deep, so that it made it a bit tough for the panel line ink to flow in. You will see what I mean later on when I show you the inking process.
Okay, so here is a nice technique to add some extra detail to your kit. First, I need to add markings to both sides, and then just like with the end holes for the panel lines, I create a circular indentation into the heel. Normally, I would add a hole into the middle of the indentation, but due to the support plastic structure inside of the heel that is blocking the way, I had to go the more complicated route. So once that was done, I grabbed a piece of runner. So once that was done, I grabbed a piece of runner and heated it up and pulled it apart. This is a great way to create plastic beams. You can adjust its thickness to your needs. Now here it would have been so much simpler if I were able to stick the plastic rod through the hole, but as it is, I'm trying to position the rod in the middle of the circle. After cutting and sanding, you can see that I did not manage to align it perfectly. That's one of the drawbacks of filming and crafting at the same time. My range of movement is so limited by the camera between my arms. But enough with the excuses, that's what the end result looks like. Pretty nice, don't you think? Before I tend to the wings, let's first do some minor adjustments to the proportions of the kit. First up, sharpen the antenna a little bit. Then I would like to give the kit a bit more height. A very very easy foolproof method with this kit is just to swap the leg joints. Since the pegs on the joints are not centered but aligned at the bottom part, by just swapping them around we can gain a couple of millimeters in height. The only drawback is that now that there's a gap between the high and thigh, you can hide it with the side skirts but they are still visible from certain angles. If you're fine with that, go for it. I think the added height looks pretty nice, but still not enough for my likings, so I decided to extend the waist. Thankfully, it's very easy with this kit since the upper and bottom parts are connected by a simple cylinder pack. And if there is one thing that I learned by watching EA Gunpla videos, then it's how to extend waists. I'm using two 1mm plot plate sheets that I'm gluing together. With a pin vise that is not larger in diameter than the body pack, I drill a hole and widen it with an X-Acto knife. Once the body pack fits, I cut off the excess plastic with a nipper and glue it to the body. Now comes the fun part. With a combination of X-Acto knife and sanding paper, I try to align the pop plate to the shape of the body. And voila, now that's what I call balanced proportions. Let's take a look at the current state of things. Last time I was watching Detective Conan while building, this time around I decided to rewatch Cat's Eye. In case you don't know, it's from the same author who did City Hunter or Angel Heart. Maybe those names ring a bell and if not, it's all good. This is classic stuff from the 80s. And with more than half of the episodes done, I went into scribing the wings. This was not much different from all the other scribing work on the other pieces. Before I started, I sanded the entire piece because the outside parts have a glossy finish to them. This makes it easier for the primer color to stick to the plastic. Since the wings have a larger surface, I was able to lean more into the circuit board design and draw out bigger lines. And I kid you not, 
By the time I finish scribing all the parts, I will be in need of new guiding tape. Speaking of which, flexible masking tape is a great way to add curved panel lines to your pieces. Just be aware, since the tape is flexible, it is not too sturdy and you're more prone to slip. So start out real real light with your first pass of lines. Once I got that down, it was just a matter of bringing it home. And this is what the wing section looks like. So, das läuft, Kamera läuft, Audio läuft auch und Klappe. So. Let us sit down on the table. Get my hair. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, all right. It is half time, my friends. Uh, we're done with the scribing process. So the next step would be attaching the wings to the back of the kit. And uh, I have come up with a method that hopefully might work because in my head it somehow does. <laughs> and I'm gonna use green stuff, which behaves like putty fill in the back of the uh, of the wings and then attach some magnets to it you know one half the magnets goes into the wings and the other half goes into the backpack this way i can take it off and put it on whenever i want so i don't know if that works out we're gonna try <laughs> The first decision that I had to make was to either keep the backpack or take it off. A quick test fit made the decision rather easy. The wings are heavy enough on their own, so with the backpack attached, the entire kit would be very back heavy, so I ditched it. When you work with green stuff, it might get tacky after you netted it for a while. If that happens, just dip your fingers in water to get rid of the tackiness. Before leaving it to dry, I press the wings onto the backpack to create an imprint. This way I know where the magnets have to go. You will have enough time to do this because with a drying time of at least 90 minutes, green stuff has a rather long working time. I will let it dry for a day now. In the meantime, I will tend to the magnets. What works in my favor is that the outer diameter of the backpack packs are the same as the magnets, so I won't need to do any adjustments on that end. All I needed to do to make the magnets fit flush with the body shell is to cut down the pack cylinder. A dab of super glue and we have the magnets ready to go. A testament of how good of a putty green stuff is, is the fact that it took me a fair while to get it into shape to fit the bag. Sanding it flat was tough and drilling the holes was even tougher. But once that was done, I was really happy with the result. Just listen to how it clicks. Just so satisfying. Going into the painting place, I felt a bit nervous. Even though I got it all planned out beforehand, I had no clue if it all would work out. After all, I was never able to achieve a real glossy metallic look. But no use worrying, there is only one direction, and that is forward.
And before I apply the colors, of course, let's enjoy the primed kit first. By the way, have you ever tried challenging yourself to a speed build without the manual? After spending so much time with the kit, you know, building it, taking it apart, test fitting and all that, I always like to think that by the time the painting phase arrives, I know the kit in and out, so here's me trying to assemble it by heart as fast as possible. to beat that and once again my friends let's enjoy the kit in its primed state Time to get serious. As always, I will be using Mr. Color Lacquer Paint since up until now I've had the best experience with him. Ever since I switched to those plastic bottles with twist caps, switching colors in between paint jobs has become so much faster. I'm mixing the paint with a leveling thinner in a 1 to 1.5 ratio. That's the ratio that works best with my USB compressorless airbrush. So one main color will be just plain flat black. For the inner frame I'm using the chrome silver that I chose for my camphor as it will be a good contrast to the black. As a base for the copper I will have to undercoat the pieces with a gloss black and the copper itself will be the one made by Alclad 2. I had a short conversation with one of the viewers in the comment section of my last video and he recommended Alclad 2 to me. So here we are. And since just black will be a bit boring, I decided to throw in a dark gray, which I will be mixing from simple black and RLM66 black gray. Nice, now that everything is prepared and ready to go, let's jump outside and do some painting. First pass was a great success. I'm really happy with how the gloss parts turned out. With these in the books, I was quite excited to jump into the next phase. The masking, which I usually don't enjoy too much, went over quite fast because I was so eager to apply the copper paint. But then this happened. That's a good opportunity to show you what I've been up to in the meantime though. Friends of mine tried to lure me into Warhammer a while ago. And what can I say, I gave in. I had no choice because check out what they gave me as a gift for my birthday. I now have a tower army worth 1000 points. So I started painting them in between. It's such a change going from a 12cm Gundam kit to this miniature size. But the painting process was so enjoyable since it was such a change of pace. Once the rain settled, I put the miniature aside and went back to my premium paint booth and finished the paint job.
<laughs> so, oh, uh, finally back at the bench. You have no idea how long it took me to finish all those parts because the last couple of weeks have been nuts. It's been, it's been raining uh, all day long, all week long, and um, I just couldn't paint because I don't have, a, I, I don't have a, a spray booth for painting inside. I just have this pizza box and uh, obviously you don't paint uh, outside when it's too humid uh, because you will ruin your paint job. So I had to wait until the rain settles to continue painting and uh, yeah, I'm finally done and I'm uh, very happy with the result. Uh, result? <laughs> very happy with the result. Uh, yeah, let's take a closer look. Okay, so before we get to the good stuff, let's check out the inner frame. This came out really nice and I believe that this color will become one of my staples in my future works. Then we have the flat black. While I do love an overall flat look on a kit, I think that in the future I won't be taking that route anymore. It has to do with the panel lining. I will touch upon that topic later on in the video. Still, it really does look good though. The subtle sheen on the surface is really nice. And now for the good stuff, the copper gold. That came out really really great. While I still haven't managed to figure out how to do a complete glossy finish, I'm quite happy with this one. Sadly, the camera doesn't capture the shine and the color hue the correct way. In real life it looks so much better. Still, I guess you can get a good grasp of the finish. Here, I have my live reaction from when I was filming this. The tape. Wow. Okay, so now if you check, nah, there we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Look at the shine. Man, that's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna rip off the first layer. Oh, look, uh, look at that clean edge. That is gorgeous. This looks so much better than the original. That's crazy. <laughs> The panel line color was another aspect about this build idea which had me on the fence. Prior to jumping into the real build, I did some research and tests with different kind of fluorescent colors. The most promising ones were those by Vallejo. Those were also easy to get my hands on, so I decided to go with them and during my tests I was in good spirits until I learned that Gunda Marcus has fluorescent colors as well. So of course I had to try them and would you look at that? The line on the very left is the Gunda Marker. It's the strongest and shiniest. So in the end I decided to use this for the panel lines. And like with all those kind of markers, you can easily extract the color by just pumping the tip. Just be aware that the color itself is rather thick, so we need to thin it. For that, I used Tamiya acrylic thinner and thinned it down to a milky-like fluid. Be aware not to flood the color with your thinner, since it will resolve the particles and leave you with a colorless pond of nothing. Still, there is no way that you will get the same level of liquidity that you are used from your panel line ink. Be aware that there is a slight learning curve with getting the right consistency, so be sure to do some tests beforehand. But once you get it down, you can almost use it like ink.
Another tip that I can give you, clean your brush from time to time. Because the color will dry after a while and the bristles won't be able to pick up any color. When this happens, you will notice that the color doesn't flow as well as before, so that will be your cue to do some cleaning. And yeah, penaline inking is a very enjoyable process and very satisfying to watch, don't you agree? Just don't do this. Oh. Ay, 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 huh? And this brings me to the topic of cleaning up. I mentioned earlier that in the future I would rather not go with a flat color anymore. And this is the very reason. I have learned that cleaning up panel lines works best with glossy color. The rough surface of a flat color finish will leave you with stains which you can see here. Maybe there is something wrong about my technique, I'm not sure, but I do know that cleaning color off of a glossy finish was way easier than this. So I think next time I would choose a glossy base paint and go over it with a flat top coat if I desire a flat look. That is my learning that I'm taking away from this build. Either way, I was able to clean most parts of it to an acceptable amount and this is what the kit looks so far. We're slowly nearing the end of this build. I can already see the beauty shots in my head, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. There are two things that are left to do, custom permit scores and decals. So let's do the permit score first. The idea is quite simple. Since black light will react to any kind of white, you can easily create your own designs in your favorite image editor of your choice and simply print it out. I've seen this on Itami Tech channel. I will link the original video up here for you to check out. The scan will provide the correct size. All you have to do is to trace the shapes and add in the custom lines. Once you print it out, you can easily replace the original stickers. And now that we have that, let's do some dress up. Since I don't own any custom aerial decals, I have no choice but to use the ones I have in stock. In the end it doesn't really matter I would say. While applying decals, I always try to consider the overall look of the kit and pick out spots where a little visual interest would be nice. I tend to use smaller compact decals than broad loud ones. I'm all about understatement when it comes to decals. Another guideline that I like to stick to is to center the design and somewhat link them together like you can see here on the arm. This way the decals can guide the eye and create a coherent look. By the way, please ignore the dust and hair. People who have cats, especially long haired cats, can relate I guess. My builds are cat hair builds and quite frankly I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Okay so here's one final time lapse and after that let's jump right into the beauty shots. <laughs> 